Hey gang, Zippo. Had some questions uh, since I did the mounting of the deck. Uh, how do you get the mid PTO adjusted? Um, the very first time I got one of these old tractors and uh, was trying to get my belt lengths figured out and all that kind of fun, happy crap. Um, I thought it was really odd that you know I had the, the I think it's a 36 inch belt on the mid PTO right here or whatever length it's supposed to be. I don't remember offhand. Um, and I would engage it without the deck on and there'd be a lot of slop so I adjusted all that slop out so that when I engaged the lever that it took all the slack out of the belt and would drive with nothing attached to it. Well that's not the way that it works. If you'll notice down here is a spring that runs from the uh, back axle then comes up right there, that spring. You can see how it's stretched out right now. Well, when the deck is not on, when the deck belt is not on, that spring has zero tension in it. So because it has zero tension in it, it pulls these two closer together. So as a result, since it pulls those two closer together, if you have nothing mounted on the front and no tension on that spring, that belt is going to appear as though it is too long. It's not too long. When you either put your sickle bar mounted underneath it or you put your rotary deck underneath and put your belts on and you stretch that spring out, the difference between the two equals out. So there's equal tension on the mid PTO and the belt going to the deck. Um, that is engineered so that there is always a constant equal pressure on both belts. Uh, really a pretty ingenious design if you think about it you don't have to worry about adjusting two belt tensions you only have to worry about adjusting one and the only one that you need to worry about adjusting is your mid PTO after you've got your deck mounted. When you get your deck mounted you don't need a lot of tension on that idler pulley to keep that PTO engaged even through the deepest of grasses. I'm going to move the camera a little bit here and show you guys. You can see it's the engagement lever. All right, the engagement lever is connected to your shift quadrant where your shift on where your lift arm is. Okay, it's bolted here and it's bolted back down here. Um, also, this is a lock nut. You tighten it down just to the point where everything still has a little bit of play in it, but it isn't super sloppy, okay? And make sure that the arc of your rod is bent just like you see here, the 90 degree. And this spring right here, in conjunction with, uh, do you guys even see that? No, nope. let me get down a little bit more. There we go, sorry about that. This spring in conjunction with the spring down underneath that I showed you guys stretched out just a few seconds ago is what keeps the tension on your mid PTO and your deck that takes care of both of them what this spring operates is this idler pulley it pushes that idler pulley into the belt you see how it's pushing into the belt now I had trouble uh, when I first got these where I would get it engaged and it would keep popping up on me. It wouldn't stay locked down. The way that you make sure that everything is set up correctly is not really difficult. What you want to do, make sure that this rod is straight. A lot of times it'll get bent. Uh, it's a soft metal. Your set screw, if you look at the base of your set screw, this is an oversized one, okay? I'm talking about this right here that set screw on that set collar. Okay, it's a collar, it looks like this, only it's a lot smaller. The, the engagement point, the bottom of that set screw, right there, you see how it's coned and it has somewhat of a sharp edge? That's real important and it's designed that way so it'll bite into this arm and not move once you've got it set. Um, the correct setting, I believe, at least it's what works for me, is on compression, with it compressed like that and all the way down, my measurement from here to the top of that set collar 
is roughly 7 sixteenths of an inch to a half an inch in that area. You do not have this spring fully compressed. You do not have this spring overly extended. You've got everything balanced between the two springs and the two belts. All of your pivot points, make sure that you keep a good drop of oil on them. They're going to collect grass and dust, blow it off, re-oil them regularly to keep everything from wearing out. Uh, most of what's holding everything together is just a bolt. The threads will eventually wear out on the bolt. You can help impede that damage just by keeping things oiled. And that will also uh, prolong the life and keep everything from getting sloppy. So, as you can see, I've got that PTO lever engaged right now, and it's got tension on the belt. You'll also notice that up on top, there is a belt guard. The belt guard also helps to act as a stop. When you release this, the belt relaxes, and it relaxes against the edge of this belt guard. That also acts as a belt stop. And then down here, one of your th this side plate right here that holds your bevel gearbox to your transmission has if it doesn't have a wire on it <clears throat> it should have and it's a guide wire to help keep the pulley uh, the belt from flying off the bottom pulley okay this helps it from going off the top this one helps it from going off the bottom and you adjust it so that when you're engaged it just pulls off of it you can see it just move off of it when I push the engagement lever down. My hand's kind of out of the, out of the picture here. Just a second. Let's see. Okay. Got my hand on the engagement lever. And you're watching right down here where it pulls away from the rod. That's what you want to happen. And then ultimately when you push that lever all the way down it should snap into place like that. It'll just drop away from your finger. And you, that way you've got spring tension that's locking your idler pulley into the belt. You don't have it set correctly if it's teetering in this area because then it runs the risk of doing that. So if you've got it and this little tab right here is hitting here right about there, then you need to do some bending to that rod so that everything will engage just the way that this one's engaging. It should drop, you can see here it'll drop about another inch, maybe an inch and a half. So that's what you want to make sure. Also, again, I can't reiterate enough, make sure you've got both belts on before trying to adjust this. You cannot get it in proper adjustment without having the deck mounted or the sickle bar mounted to get your tension set correctly. So that's that, and I hope that answers all the questions. Uh, the gap that's in here is just enough to clear the top edge of the belt when it's engaged. It takes two 9 16 sockets or box in wrenches, and it has a slot. You just loosen it, drop it down, make sure it's even front to back and top to bottom just a very small gap so that it helps stop your belt and, and it doesn't cause run on that was another problem that I ran into was run on uh, where I would disengage but because I didn't have my guides set right they would still the the mid PTO would still spin so there we go we're at nine minutes I hope that's a good enough explanation for you guys if you've got any questions on it uh, after seeing this video please do uh, Ask away, and I will get back to your questions as soon as I possibly can. Thanks, guys. Zippo. Later. I'm out.